Hello, my name is Chaitanya Bailwal. In this video, we are going to look at object-oriented programming and how it works in uh, C-sharp and Python. So we are essentially going to build a simple program uh, with two classes uh, which have the same functionality between uh, C-sharp and Python. This is a program to do some, uh, it's a class which has some basic math functions. And then there's a derived class called C advanced math, which implements a function for doing factorials, but it derives from the base class. So on the left, I have Visual Studio opened and on the right, uh, PyCharm. So PyCharm we'll use for Python and Visual Studio for C sharp. So as you can see, let me expand the solution on Visual Studio. There are three main files. There's a C base math.cs, C advanced math.cs and a program.cs. So program.cs mainly instantiate um, uh, object of the C advanced math class. Similarly, we have the same structure in Python, except there's a uh, there's also a concept of a solution per se. So I've added all these files in a single project. So the C base math, C advanced math, and the program.python. Now let's take a look at the code of C base math. So I double click. Let me expand the code window and in Visual Studio. So these two classes on the left, I have C sharp on the right. I have Python are doing the same, have the same functionality. The init here is the constructor in Python, similar to the constructor I declare in C sharp, which takes as input the significant digits. In Python, I also have to pass an object of self. So it's a, it automatically creates a private variable. Anything starting with two underscores in Python is treated is equivalent to a Python. It has more, seman, more semantics to it, but for the sake of this uh, demo, let's consider this as a private variable. Similarly, I have a function called private. Uh, that's a private function for setting the rounding. I start the same function with underscore two underscores to use that in, in Python. And I'm, the conventions I'm using in Python, everything, it's kind of use a camel case where it's starting with a small alphabet. While in C sharp, we start the function names starts with a capital. So this is my private function in C sharp, we can just use the keyword private and public to differentiate. In Python, if it does not start with a two underscores, it's automatically treated as a public. So I have a function called sum that take two doubles and calls the function rounding and basically does a sum operation. Similarly for subtract, multiply and division, and we see the same thing here. In Python, of course, we don't use these braces because everything is done by indentation. So if I declare my function using the def keyword, this is my function, I pass the self object. I need to pass that because I'm going to use the set rounding function here. And then I simply return this uh, value. This indentation, single indentation here, says that this routine here is part of the function sum. So pretty straightforward. As you can see, the Python code is a little bit compact. This indentation has its positives and its negatives. Uh, they had two spectrums, but I won't dive into that. Also use the use of the colon that denotes that uh, we use it both in the class and the function that denotes where the specific uh, code for the respective class or the function starts. So pretty straightforward, right? And here, since base math is a is the foundational class, we are not referencing any other class here. So there is no references here, except in uh, C sharp, I have to reference the system library because I'm using the math uh, static class. Now let's take a look at the second one, the C advanced math. So the C advanced math actually derives from C base math. Uh, now C base math and C advanced math are the same namespace. So in C sharp, I don't need to explicitly include it. Derivation is pretty straightforward. 
this is the common syntax that they borrowed from C++. Now Java uses something uh, different. It, you have to use the inherits keyword in Java. So here's my base class function. Uh, sorry, uh, this is my derived class. This is the constructor and in turn I call the constructor of the base class. So this is in C sharp. I just declare a function here called factorial int just computes a factorial of any value passed to it and then it returns the final value. Note that I use the function multiply so multiply in turn if I go to the definition I just go to the implementation it automatically uses the set rounding function so I don't have to round the values. Now let's take a look at Python for doing the same thing. I of course have my constructor, the sig I set the significant digits and I call the base class. So this is equivalent to this in C sharp where I'm calling the base class constructor if I use C base math dot in it. One important thing to notice is the from C base math import C base math. What this is telling Python, since there's no direct concept of namespace, it's telling Python that from the class C base math dot pi import the class C base math. So here if I look at all the files I have, I have a file called C base math dot pi. So this is a very important concept to understand. This is how you link code in different files in Python. And you know, you uh, if you're any doing any commercial grade application, your code has to be split in multiple files for ease of maintainability and reading and a lot of other factors. So this is how you use declare a code in some uh, in another file and use it in some other file. In C# -sharp, we didn't have to do that because it's part of the same namespace. But if you're using an external library, like in the case of C base math. I have to use the using function. So it's kind of similar to that. Uh, the function factorial in Python has the same functionality as we have in C sharp. Basically we execute a loop and then it again calls the multiply function. Note that self dot multiply since we inherited it, it will uh, be able to reference this function multiply in the base class. One thing I forgot to show is how we use inheritance in Python is this is the syntax. You declare this as the base class and within braces you declare the base class. So this is equivalent to using this syntax over here in C sharp. So that's not too complex. And again we are using the indentation. Note how this code here is part of the factorial int and this code here is part of the for loop. So rather than using braces, Python allows you to use indentation, which actually also by default leads to much cleaner and easy to read code. Sometimes it can get frustrating, but again, as I'd mentioned before, let's not go into that. Here is the program.cs and the program.python. This is the main class that will be run. Again, we are instantiating an instance of the derived class. So we have to reference using uh, this function again, C advanced math imports C advanced math class again. Oops. So C advanced math class is defined over here in this file. So I'm referencing this file in program.pi. And I'm just creating an instance of C advanced math and calling just three functions and executing the same, you know, three uh, functions are calling the base class and this is calling a function in the derived class. Same functionality in C sharp. So I'm already showing the code of program.cs. Again, since we, it's in the same namespace, I don't need to explicitly reference C advanced math. I don't need a syntax like this. This is my main program. Uh, this is the main function. I have to declare it at static so that it can be executed. I create an instance of the C advanced math, passes a significant digit value of three. As you can see, if I type three here, it's the number of sig digits. In Python, 
in PyCharm, they, you don't have the same level of intelligence as Visual Studio. So again, this uh, this code, just to minimize my project tree, this code between C Sharp and Python is very similar. Now, uh, if you need more details, I've given a link to my blog uh, in the description of this video. I have more details on this specific example. Uh, the article has been broken up into three sections. So I encourage you to go through that. Also note that Python development is also possible in Visual Studio, uh, but I kind of like the PyCharm IDE. It's good for Python, but for C Sharp and anything .NET related, obviously Visual Studio is the choice. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a comment below and see you next time. Thank you for watching.